The gain knob is the most important knob on the console. For any input, it's the part of the signal chain that affects everything else after it. And if you get good at setting your gains, then everything else will be easier and you'll have much better success with getting balanced mixes. Now, there are definitely larger picture issues with gain, and we'll go over that later, but boosting or cutting gain in audio really means that you're turning up or down the level of an audio signal. Since we eventually mix these audio signals together and want them to be balanced, if we get each signal to a good level at the start of the signal chain, we're in good shape. And it, it all starts right at the input. If you plug something into a console, the very first thing the signal hits is the mic preamp. And since mic level is really low, the mic pre is able to add a ton of gain to the signal to get it up to line level. Or if you already have a line level signal, you plug it directly into the line input. But with either mic or line input, you'll be able to adjust the gain before the signal passes through the rest of the channel strip. And this is a critical step in getting good balance in your mixes. If the gains are balanced here, then everything else along the way becomes easier. So how do we set the gain? Now, this is one of those areas where I'm gonna tell you how I do it and how I think you should approach it, at least to start. But other engineers do have different methods and that's fine, but this is a good way to get a really solid start. Setting gain is something that you get a feel for as you mix more and more shows. So basically we're using the solo PFL button, the meter on the console, and a pair of headphones to set the gain. Now, before you even plug anything into the console, the first thing you do is make sure that the gain and fader are turned down and the channel is muted. Then you connect your mic or DI. After that, you'll hit the solo PFL button. PFL means pre-fader listen, and we'll run up against this problem with various manufacturers, but sometimes these terms can be different from console to console. For example, on a Mackie console, it's called a solo button, but on a Yamaha console, it's called a Q button. Anyway, a couple things happen when you hit the PFL button. First, you'll hear the sound in the headphones. Now, you should definitely take advantage of this feature. If you have a chance to hear exactly what the sound is like in the headphones, you can make sure it's sounding good before you put it in the speakers. Now, one thing to do while you're doing this step for the first channel, once you have the gain where it's looking good on the meter, then adjust the headphones so it sounds like a nice, comfortable volume for listening. Then when you're going through the rest of the channels, the correct gain will actually sound like a good volume in your headphones. Okay, so you hit the PFL button and you can hear what the input sounds like. But in addition to hearing it, you'll also be able to see the level on a meter. Now, some large consoles have meters for every channel, but most of the time you'll see the level on the solo channel on the main meter of the mixer. So now we're ready to set the gain. And this can be a little different depending on the instrument. You'll want to end up around zero dB on the meter for things like guitar or keyboard that have a steady sound and plus three dB for drums or other things that have loud peaks. The idea is to use the meter on the console to help you set the gain just right. And once you have the gain set, you can unsolo and unmute the channel. And only then are you ready to start turning up the fader. Do it slowly. If you get only halfway up and it's way too loud, we need to look at the overall gain structure. It might be necessary to lower the main left-right mix or change the input gain of the system processor. Or if you turn it up to unity gain and it's too quiet, then we also might need to change the gain somewhere else. If you set the gain by the meter, turn the fader on the channel strip up to zero, and also have the main output faders at zero, then hopefully you should be getting a nice solid volume through the system. And if all this is set up properly, then we have a good overall gain structure.